Cade Perry here, and in this video I want to share with you my three favorite canvas tips. And I will be honest up front and tell you that I've listed them out, and there are actually about ten because of the details and subtle nuances to some of these tips. When I discovered each of these things, it, it made a huge impact on the way that I use canvas and teach my courses. So let me go ahead and share my screen and show you here that this is just a screen capture of um, the speed grader in Canvas for an essay in my class. And I have blurred out the content for student privacy and FERPA reasons. But what I wanted to show you is that over here on the left hand side, I have used the speed grader um, margin comments to highlight uh, some of the strengths and weaknesses of the paper. And I have told my students kind of a color code and how to use this and view this um, feedback, which is extremely important in my online course because I require them to view this feedback and to respond to it with questions and with plans for revision. So for instance, I will show you here, um, it timestamps when the student viewed the document, which is excellent, but you need to instruct them where to go. And so I've actually created a video using the student view to go into uh, Canvas and actually show them step by step where they need to go to find this, this information and how to view their feedback. And it will actually um, show a timestamp for when they did this. And then I require them to respond. And so down here I have listed my feedback um, and told them where to go how to view the feedback, and that they need to respond to my comments within the week. And so you can see here that this student said what his biggest improvement he thought that he needed was based on my feedback. And then I also let them know um, to tell me if they have any questions. And this student said, love the feedback. If you have any ideas on how to improve on summarizing, uh, concluding, I'd love to hear it. And this is really important for me to know. Now in this class, I'm actually checking on this. Within the next week, I will go back and I will look at everyone's uh, comments here. And again, I will actually, I tell them that they will lose points if they don't complete this feedback response. Um, so it's important that they respond to the feedback so that they improve their paper for the next draft. But if I miss this comment, um, I'm missing that he wants to work on his summarizing and concluding. And so I have, have overlooked that. And so I want to show you a few tips here for how you can get this information without checking every single assignment <laughs> submission uh, every single day, which would be absurd and impossible. There are a few things that Canvas uh, has, maybe a little bit hidden, but that can help you to do that. And the first one is to go into the inbox. And so I've obviously just clicked here on the inbox, and again I've blurred out the emails here. Um, but if you go into the little drop down box at the top of the screen, and you click on submission comments, it will actually show you all of the submission comments made on all of your assignments, so things that students wrote. Now sometimes you will click on it and it will just say thank you, right, or, or something. Or maybe it will be a submission comment where they put, sorry this is late. Or maybe they saw that comment box and just typed in their name or something. And so, I don't know, about half of those comments you'll likely be able to just disregard. But if I come down here I'll be able to see here's actually the students where he said um, that he wanted some help or wanted to know about how to conclude his paper. And so I can very easily respond back in the comment box. I can say, um, you know, check out, um, if I can spell it right, check out this particular chapter or check out this page in our, in our Canvas course. Or no need to worry about that. Maybe that's something upcoming that they're going to learn about in the class. Um, or maybe I could direct them to a video if he's talking about looking up a video uh, of a particular skill that they're trying to work on. In any instance, it's really important to know these submission comments. I have taught with Canvas long enough to remember that these actually used to show up in the inbox, and Instructor has taken that away, which I think most people enjoy because they want an inbox to be less cluttered and actually just messages. But I am worried about a lot of messages that students have typed in that comment box that I'm not seeing. And so that's one way you can check it. But let me show you another really helpful way that you can check um, on those Canvas submission comments and notifications. So here, if you go into your account and you click on notifications, you can actually come in and customize when Canvas will tell you about this. And so you can come down and you can look at submission comments and it says this is an assignment submission comment. And you can say that I want you to send me an immediate notification of this and so they can send you an email. I want a daily summary. Uh, and when I do, um, this is usually what I have it set to in the uh, 
fall and spring semesters or during the summer I set mine to weekly and so I'll just get a weekly summary um, of any submission comments that are any of the assignments or you can turn them off of course um, but this is really helpful for me because then it will send me an email of all the submission comments that are made throughout either that day or week or immediately as they appear and then I can go through and look them over uh, and I like to just pull up that email and just open new browser windows for each of those comments, check it out, see if it's one of those that I can just quickly disregard, or to see if it's something that I need to respond to the student, send them an email or send a response back. So this is a really helpful uh, notification I would recommend that everyone comes into their notifications and updates. You can also go to the settings, and I like to show my students this as well, and you can add a new email address that they send you these notifications from Canvas and this is awesome. My students go, ah, oh, they audibly gasp when I show them this. But you can actually come in and type in your cell phone number and it will text notifications um, about uh, what, any of these things that you set, right? So when they have a, something graded and they want to know that it was graded, well, they can have that sent to their text messages. Um, and of course, standard rates would apply for text messages, but um, they can actually add that there, which is really cool. And students usually like to do that. Okay, the last thing I'll say about this first tip for submission comments is back in my assignment here, um, the way I'm teaching my course now, I currently just say reply in this comment box and uh, within the next week, letting me know how you plan to revise and if you have any questions. Of course, that doesn't show up on their calendar. They're not reminded to do that. And so sometimes I have some students who forget that. So for any of you who might consider doing something like this required, I'll tell you what I'm working on currently to revise my uh, course for next semester is I'm putting in a new assignment and it's just going to be a five point assignment that says, make sure you check your feedback. Here's how you do that for the last assignment or check the rubric or whatever it might be, the highlighted margin notes that I've put uh, for your essay and then respond um, to this assignment with, and I just say three sentences, um, but you could customize that however you want. Then it will show up in their actual to-do list, will be on their calendar and you can give them points or take away points. Um, in my case, where it's super important that they respond and see my feedback before they move on to the next draft. So submission comments is the first tip that I wanted to share. And hopefully there are some useful details that will help you as you're working on uh, your own courses. Okay, the next thing then that I wanted to show you, uh, some tips for using the settings. So here I am in one of my courses and over on the left hand side, you will see the settings bar. And if I click on settings, there are a few things I wanted to just show you. The first one is that you can actually change or add an image that shows up on your dashboard and the student's dashboard. And I'm going to say this is a really helpful thing to do. I'll show you here. This is my dashboard, right? You can see the courses I've added images to. And I usually like to pick something that's relevant to the content. So for my myths class, I have an image of a piece of artwork that we talk about. Um, some pulp fiction art in my science fiction class that we talk about. Um, and you can obviously come in and add that just that little piece of art, which is nice to know about. I will also tell you here, Canvas says that their suggested dimension size for that image is 262 by 146 pixels. Um, and so I, I'm assuming if it was too large or too small, maybe it will distort the image. So you can obviously customize that if you'd like, but you can add an image. And I will say I'm super jealous because um, I actually have seen a number of colleagues who have a, a GIF that they have added in um, to that image uh, or that that uh, dashboard box and it actually has uh, animation or something that looks really cool. So my, my next goal to revise my class is to add a GIF um, to that. Uh, just a few things here in the settings that I wanted to show you. First of all, the start end date is super important. The TLC sends out reminders of this, but just make sure that you are aware of the start end date and the features that you can restrict students from viewing the course before or after the course end date. That's always something that I just have on my calendar to come in and double check. But I want to show you down here at the bottom, there is a more options tab. And I wish that a canvas made this a little bit more visible. But if you've never uh, come in and seen this, I want to show you a few cool tips. If you click on more options, you'll see, and I don't even know what the default is. I don't know if it, all of these are unchecked, but the first one I know is defaulted as unchecked, which shows recent announcements on the Canvas homepage. And so uh, I want to show you, let me go back to my homepage here. Um, 
you'll see in my class that the recent announcements will load. And so it tells students some information about uh, some recent announcements. And of course they can click on the announcements tab, but it's always really nice to just have that posted right at the top of the page. Um, and so you can come down and obviously disable that if you'd like, but you could say I want one or two or three to show up and you can obviously customize that. This is one that I like to set because I have an assignment that has students attach a file to a discussion thread and so I can set to allow that to happen. I can have students edit or delete their own discussion replies. Sometimes I may want to change that. Um, and so I would just say for my second tip in the settings uh, bar here is to come in and spend just a few minutes looking over these settings and think about some of those things. So okay, the start end date, the image, the more options. You'll also see over here on the right hand side validate links in content. And this link validator is a super useful resource. If you have never used this, I encourage you to run out to your Canvas course and to uh, go run the link validator. If you click Start Link Validator, it will spend a, a few minutes probably cycling through all of your pages in Canvas, and it will tell you if there are any broken links or uh, images that are unreachable for students. And I will say that there are sometimes things like unpublished content that I disregard and I ignore. I don't need my link validator to always be 100% perfect. Um, but the, the course design checklist for online classes wants all instructors to go through and, and validate uh, and make sure that there's not missing links and missing things in your course. Um, I also like to kind of just periodically do this as well. And there is one of the settings that you can set as a notification that if a student clicks on something that's broken, it will send you an email. And so you can also check that out. Okay, then the last thing that I want to show you um, in the uh, settings is the navigation. And this is one of the most important. I always want to make sure I have a very clean navigation bar over here on the left hand side. And you'll see that there are dozens of things that Canvas adds in. And anytime that there is something new added in, um, it may be automatically just imported in as a new tool or standard or something that's institutionally set. And so I like to come in and make sure that this is clean. If it's something I'm not going to use, like in this course we don't use Office 365 or we don't use the Snow Library or whatever it might be, I can come and disable that. And obviously you can just drag and drop them here. Another hot tip about this though is you want to make sure that you scroll down and hit save. And it's kind of a poor placement for the save button. I would I would tell Canvas they should probably think about remo uh, removing this elsewhere, but just make sure you hit save or you'll be like, wait, I thought I customized that. So you can see here as an instructor, there are a whole bunch of tabs and they have this little uh, not visible to students crossed out eyeball. And so I like to go in, customize the order and the content of what is visible for students. And then if you click on student view, up here in the right hand corner of your home page, you'll see that the student view is just much cleaner. And if I have a whole bunch of tabs there that they aren't going to use throughout the semester, uh, it can be just cluttered and it can even be just a navigation issue for those students. And so making sure that you set that is, is super important. Uh, and you can also disable assignments so that students are more likely to work through the modules to find content and then those assignments. And that's always something that's important for my classes as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave the student view here and I'm going to show you my last tip and it has to do with the course calendar. So back in those settings, you can actually find um, a tab over on the right hand side that says course calendar or on your home page, um, you can also see view calendar. And when I click on that, it's going to take you to um, just the calendar that you've probably seen. It's over here on the left hand side as well. You can customize which calendars are shown in this, and I've, I'm looking here at one that's a previous course calendar, so um, I'm going to change the due dates, and I don't want students to be confused. So I'm looking at an older semester here. Um, but one of the really helpful features for me is you can drag and drop assignment due dates. And so rather than going in and editing every single assignment um, for things like maybe spring break or fall break or a holiday um, as it changes from semester to semester, I can come in here and just drag and drop these assignments whenever I, I want the due date to be on. And so if it's my summer class, for instance, and it's the 4th of July, I can come in and say, oh yeah, I need to move that assignment a day earlier or something like that. One really helpful thing that I found out, and this, this one was close to a life-changing thing, is... 
you can see here that it only shows this this month and so I the month ended on the 30th and so if I wanted to add something to to May I'm unable to do that right like it, it won't let me go into May so here is my tip so if I wanted to change this due date into the month of May I can go up to this calendar and I can go to May and I can actually drag it and I can drop and say okay I want that on May 1st and so now when I come to May 1st, you'll notice that it placed it there. And so that's another helpful tip that I can move from uh, month to month and uh, change those submission deadlines by just dragging and dropping into that. So if I wanted to move that back into May or into April, excuse me, I can go and drag and drop. And you'll see, there it is. Um, so there you go, you can drag and drop. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is it's always best to do this dragging and dropping before the semester starts because it will send notifications to students that a due date has changed if they have that notification set up. And so if I, you know, that's why I did this in an old course because just dragging and dropping that those three times, I've just sent three emails to students and I don't want to do that. So making sure that um, you try to limit that during the semester uh, is, is a helpful tip as well. And then the last thing with the course calendar um, is that you can come in and click on appointment group and if you have ever uh, used this feature for setting up things like office hours or group work um, it's a really helpful tool I'm going to give just a quick preview of it here I would encourage you to look it up in the canvas community pages or perhaps to talk to the TLC if you have questions or want to do this but if I wanted to create maybe virtual office hours I could come in and say I'm creating virtual office hours and I'm going to tell you where it's maybe it's on Zoom um, or you know Big Blue Button or Microsoft Teams, whatever it might be. Um, or if you are actually in your office, you could put at your office location as well. But you can select the date, and it's going to make me do this for a future date. So I'm just going to pretend here that on August 1st, I'm going to have office hours from say 12 to 2 p.m. And I want to break that up. Let's say I want to do you know 20 minute sessions uh, from these office hours well you could go through and add another time here and you could keep doing that but if you come and you go to this divide into equal slots of 20 minutes and hit go you'll notice that it separates that which is just awesome right it automatically does that and so I can now say okay I've created however many times in that uh, few hour window broken up by 20 minutes and then I'm like oh you know what I already have a, a call or a meeting or something at this time I'm gonna X that one out right and I can obviously add to it and I can change it there are also some other settings to take a look at one that's super important is to select calendars so if I just want to make this available to one class I need to come in and customize that right um, and then those students can come into the calendar you probably want to give them some instruction on how to do this. Maybe you can make a screencast video walking them through step by step. Uh, but they can come in and they can sign up for these times if you create this and, and customize it in the calendar. I can also say that I want to limit participants to attend one appointment. Maybe I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to uncheck that and they could sign up for all of them if they wanted. Or maybe I want to say, hey, I, I, I want to respect others' uh, ability to sign up, so I'm going to limit this. You can obviously uh, adjust it enable and disable that you can also say you want to allow students to see who has signed up for the time slots because you might be doing some group work or something uh, if you have groups enabled in the course you could say okay I want to have three students come at this time and they are able to sign up for that uh, and then of course I can put some details in there for whatever it might be that you're talking about or working on and, and they're able to come into their calendar and add this now I won't publish this but obviously uh, you would publish that and they're able to come in and claim those time slots so a nice way to do kind of the sign up sheet for office hours that you might do in a face to face class. So hopefully those three to 10 tips or so were helpful for you as you are doing your Canvas courses. And I want to know what your um, most helpful tips are or best practices are for Canvas. So please share yours, whether you make a video or just type them into the comment box in our online excellence course. Uh, I'm hopeful we can create just kind of a dialogue of best practices and tips. Uh, and so thanks for watching. I'm noticing the time we're at 20 minutes. So I'll cut it off there and wish you the best.